Welcome into the Janesville Jets Coaches Show right here on the Big AM 1380, the Big AM 1380.com, the TuneIn Radio app under WBEL, and also the AM 1380 app. We're all over the place, and uh, the Janesville Jets have been all over the place here, uh, seemingly at least in the in the month of November. But now we turn the page and get set for uh, a month at home, and a lot going on to tell you about here. Uh, salute to Derry going on. Uh, here this Friday night, uh, puck drops at seven o'clock. It's 4-H FFA night. There's a lot of stuff going on to tell you about there. And then the big teddy bear toss, great charity event going on on Saturday night with, uh, the Sioux Eagles in town and our Janesville Jets coaches show. We'll, uh, we'll, uh, get one of the players on one of the defensemen here, uh, a first year player with the Jets coming up a little bit later on, but we begin with Joe Dibble, head coach. How you doing, Dibbs? Doing well yourself. I'm doing quite well. Uh, the, the road trip was, uh, was a long one. Uh, we talked about that, Austin, and then the quick turnaround on Thanksgiving to head out east to get to Johnstown for a couple games, three games in four days. Um, uh, how did it all go? I mean, I know I know the win-loss record for it, you know, two and one on the trip, so uh, I guess a road trip like that, you've got to be happy with at least coming away with two of those, right? It, exactly. I, I feel, uh, I mean, especially against those two teams, I mean, Austin is one of the one of the better teams or higher end teams in our league, um, according to, you know, blogs and things like that. But at the end of the day, uh, we just played them a couple weeks before that. So we knew what we were in for and, uh, it, we knew we got exactly what we expected. Um, good hockey game, uh, finished strong, started a little slow, but it was exciting. Uh, slow start, but, uh, I mean, it's, it's hard to, it's hard to think that a slow start isn't going to happen now and again on a trip like that. Right. I mean, uh, that that was that was pretty nuts, and I'm imagining you and and maybe more so the players because you got to do a little <laughs> airfare in there um, at, at some point, so maybe a little nicer for you. Yeah, I, I mean it's it's tough to explain to or inform any of the new guys, especially the rookies coming in, saying, "Hey, you're going to be on the bus for pretty much the next two days, and uh, and you can't get off." Um, and, and especially you have to get off and win hockey games. You know, whether you're in in Janesville or in Pennsylvania or Alaska, whatever the travel schedule is, it's. That's what uh, nobody really puts into the into play as far as what these kids go through before they step on that ice, even just to get there. So, and uh, I know that you had talked about, and, and we had talked about you guys trying to find some ice time on the way out there, maybe on on the Thursday, and it sounded like uh, as hard as you guys tried, that just wasn't able to happen. So that kind of modified things a little bit too for the guys. Uh, you know what? It, it was impossible. I, I think we called probably. Close to 15 rinks, and, and we couldn't find one rink that would, understandably, um, being Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving that yeah. <laughs> didn't want to come in and open uh, open the doors for us to skate. So, which we understood that, and and it was it, we were fortunate enough to get into Johnstown at a decent enough time where the hotel was 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 awesome. They uh, set us up in our own room and well set the team up. I wasn't there uh, in their own room and did a Thanksgiving uh, style buffet for them and whatnot. So we were really appreciative that. Uh, the guys still got to have a Thanksgiving dinner and whatnot. Absolutely, and and you had uh, you had Thanksgiving dinner. Being from Minnesota, which we've talked about before, you guys were in Austin on Wednesday, so you got to spend Thanksgiving with the family and and got to share some pretty exciting news uh, over the weekend. I, I did. Um, my wife and I are expecting our our second child, and and we informed my family and and kind of just let the rabbit out of the hat uh, in regards to child number two coming. So it, it was a good. It was a special experience for for me. It's uh, I only get home back there usually once a year and it's christmas time so this is actually the first thanksgiving that uh i haven't or that i've had in, in six years so it was uh it was a pretty special one too probably one that i won't forget for quite some time well congratulations to you and and, and your wife that's uh Thank excellent you. and in your son getting to be big brother now yeah you know what it's uh hopefully he's got a little a little line mate for him there you go <laughs> there you go exactly uh well let's uh let's get back on the ice here good joe dibble head coach Janesville jets with us you guys went eight and three in the month of November, and uh, you guys are out leading the division here in the North, playing really good hockey. Um, you know, pretty much from from the get go here uh, mm -hmm. th this season. But eight and three in the month of November. Um, in terms of the month, what uh, what was it most this month that led to those victories? You know what? It's uh, it's just the fact of the the never give up um, mentality that our team has in these young men. It's it doesn't matter what point of the game it is, what the score is. Um, they're going to go until that buzzer, you know, goes off at the end of the game, and they're going to do it for one another. It's uh, we don't have any individuals on this hockey team, and, and that's one thing we've been praising and and preaching from the beginning. It's um, we have to do this as one unit and, and not as one person. It's we rely on each other. It's we don't rely on you know one line or or one goaltender or, or one power play or anything like that. It's uh, 
we have confidence in each other and, and it, it's been fun to watch these guys feed off of each other and hold each other accountable to, to push the bar every day. Now, you guys are, are home here for a while now. All your games in December are at home. You've even uh, starts off, off in the new year, first game or two in January uh, here at the Janesville Ice Arena as well, which is fantastic for fans, fantastic for for the players, for the families, all to, to, you know, to get to be around it all more consistently. But uh, the road, I know, does bring some nice things for the team. So how do you, how do you keep that momentum? How do you keep the, the team aspect going here now that you guys will be at home so much? Yeah, you know what? The, the, the biggest thing for us is just to make sure they still uh, they have you know the, the right thing in mind. It, it's not worrying about uh, who's in the stands or you know they're, they're home for that long. So what's going on away from the rink uh, in, in Janesville? Because they become part of the community and they, they meet and they get friends here and uh, and, and whatnot. So it, it's mostly for us. It's you know changing it up in, in the week of practices being a little different. Whether that's us you know, bringing them bowling on a, on a Wednesday. And we just say, you know what, guys, we're not going to skate today. We're going to go to the bowling alley and just keeping everything fresh and new and, and fun. It's, that's the biggest thing. When you're home for long, you know, periods of time, it's, it, it's tough for the guys not to feel like they're doing the same thing over and over and over. So we have to make sure that we're, we're staying fresh and we're bringing new ideas and, and changing things up a little bit for this month. It is uh, three straight weekends uh, that, that you guys are, are at home here. Uh, beginning this weekend and then the next two as well. Sioux, Keystone, Michigan. You've got Michigan again after that, um, after Christmas. So uh, when you look at each of these weeks in the practice routine, what's this week look like, for example, in terms of what you're doing out of that long trip, getting ready for, for Friday and Saturday? For us, it's, I mean, we didn't necessarily let them take any time off out of the gym. Um, they were back in the gym for their workouts yesterday. They were in the gym today. Uh, we gave them off yesterday, no practice on the ice. A couple guys came out for an optional skate that uh, didn't play both games on the weekend. Uh, but for us, the, the first week will be, be a pretty normal week, um, except for having the, the day off yesterday. But it's it's next week where we'll kind of start to bring some fresh things in and, and whatnot. Uh, for us, it's 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 tough to you know keep these guys away from the rink because they're a bunch of rink rats. And and we look at it and go, oh, we just played you know three games in four days. We're we're on a road trip for eighteen hundred miles in, in four days, and we haven't had a weekend off since I, I believe right after the showcase in September, where we're going, hey guys, it's get away from the rink. And <laughs> it's nice to see them have that hunger, and they always want to be working on things and, and getting better, which is good for us. But at the same time, we we also need them to understand, you know, a day away from the rink is sometimes a good thing where they can reju- you know rejuvenate and and understand that, all right, now I can go back to work tomorrow. I, I, I feel refreshed. And uh, and especially at this point in the year, too, because there's a lot of season left. Uh, I mean, we're, we're a couple months into this thing, um, obviously, at this point, but there's still a lot of hockey left to be played. So uh, to stay fresh and to not get burnt out uh, on the ice is, is probably a pretty key thing. Yeah, and, and for us, it's, I mean, we've had some pretty exciting news, which keeps the guys motivated, too. We've One of our players is actually uh, leaving tonight, um, Robert Smith's, uh, he's from Latvia, and, and he was just invited to play for the U20 team. For, so he's going to play for his country. So he'll be gone for us for the next month, um, playing in the Junior Challenge over there. Over in, I think they're in Italy uh, this awesome. year. So yeah, it, it's cool. pretty exciting. And our, one of our goaltenders, uh, the Rutledge, uh, Jared Rutledge, might have an opportunity um, to be called up to the U, back up to the USHL. So um, news like that just keeps the guys, you know, excited and wanting to work that much harder, to, so they can be the next guy to, you know, whether it's going on to the USHL or college or. You know, who knows, even playing for your country. That's pretty amazing. Pretty cool stuff uh, with the Janesville Jets. JanesvilleJets.com. Uh, tickets, everything you need for this weekend. You can check it out there, JanesvilleJets.com. Again, it's uh, it's going to be salute to Derry coming up on Friday night with a 7 o'clock start against Sioux. Uh, the Sioux Eagles in town for the weekend. 4-H and FA night. Uh, country Western night. So the best dressed is going to get a prize. Cowbell giveaways, which... Um, Cowbells are are very fun at, at a hockey rink. That's kind of a signature, isn't it? It's like the Vuvuzela in, in soccer, right? It, it is. You know what? They're everywhere. And I'll be honest, they it's they drive me nuts. I hate them. They drive me nuts too. <laughs> I, I can't stand it, but they're giving them away here. Uh, and it's sponsored by the Rock County Dairy Promotion Council. Uh, and uh, it's discount day, of course. So you can get yourself set up for Saturday. The teddy bear toss on Saturday. Bring your teddy bear. Uh, to toss on the ice. Mascots from around the area are going to be there. Uh, Faith and Family Night as well. There's a pregame concert starting at 5.30. So a lot going on this weekend with uh, with the Janesville Jets. Uh, you brought up some of the things going on for these players, and that was a question that I had for you. So in return then, um, are there moves that you guys are making? Are you bringing in uh, some new bodies? Uh, potentially. It just uh, We've got our captain, Drew Callen. He's still out with an injury. Um, has a, He hurt his knee, so... With with Smith's leaving to go play at the World Juniors, um, you know we might potentially will be bringing in affiliate players. Uh, we've got a kid coming in. He's actually from St. Louis. 
Uh, he's playing in Iowa right now. He's on NHL Central Scouting where he'll be in this weekend, a, a big boy. Uh, he's a 97 uh, birth year. But he's 6'4", 6 6'5". 6 um, so he, he'll be you know a new face that nobody will. He'll be the biggest kid on the ice more than likely this yeah, weekend. Sure. So, um, but yeah, we'll bring in some of – we get a list of 12 players. Uh, it's called our affiliate list that they're allowed to play six games throughout the season where you don't have to make any roster moves. So okay. we'll, uh, we'll utilize that list over the next month with the injuries and our guys gone. How do you acclimate a guy uh, last minute, essentially, uh, onto the ice uh, with, with whoever his line mates might happen to be in the rotations you guys are using? You know what? You don't. I mean, there, there's no really way to do it. It's obviously, it's the first time these guys have ever, you know, not only played, but ever even met uh, some of these kids that come in. So for us, it's we just tell the guys to, you know, the new guys that come in, keep it simple. We go over our systems with them, um, ask questions if they need it. But other than that, just work hard, keep it simple, and have fun. And uh, we understand and we tell them it's, you know, we know you're going to make mistakes out there. You haven't been with us all year, and just understand it's going to happen. Just don't let it happen after the first time you make it. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah, I got to learn from that mistake and and learn quickly because yeah. there's no room for error after that. Uh, the the division here is pretty tight uh, with you guys at the top, 35 points, uh, 26 games in. Sue is behind you at 31, and then it's really muddy after that. Keystone, Michigan, Johnstown and Springfield all separated by just a point or two. Um, so I imagine you look at this month of, Dece- of December, knowing you've got Sioux, Keystone, Michigan for four games. I mean, this is a pretty crucial stretch in the midpoint of the year, is it not? You know what it is. It, it's it's one of those you know points in the year where you're, you're looking at your board and we're looking at our calendar in our office going, okay, uh, whether it's, you know, let's say it's 10 games, it's eight games, you're laying it out going, okay, we want to go, you know, six and two in the next eight and, and you put those projections out there and, and it never happens to what you want. You're either better or you're worse or, or you're right down the middle. So for us, it's we just have to continue to play our game. And we haven't paid much attention to the standings. We haven't paid much attention to what any, anybody else is doing but what we're doing. And uh, it, it's paid off. So for us, it's mainly it's staying healthy, you know, staying healthy, staying fresh, um, getting the proper rest and ultimately not uh, not taking any – you know, bad injuries because we're not taking care of our bodies at this next home stretch. Uh, Drew Callen, you meant uh, you mentioned your your captain is dealing with a knee injury. Is everybody else pretty healthy? Or you guys, uh, you guys got anybody else that's banged up right now? Yep, no, actually, uh, Drew's the only one. Adam, who's going to be coming in here after me, he was uh, he was another guy. This will be his first. This is his first week back. He's had a, he's been out with a concussion, so we're we're really excited to get Adam back and. Um, you know, hopefully Drew, I think he's got three weeks left until he can start skating again. All right. Well, I'll give him, uh, I'll give Adam the, uh, the old brain test here. I'll throw some, <laughs> some quick trivia at him or something of that nature. Uh, gotta be nice to see the guys clean shaven at this point, right? Now that Movember's passed guys Ooh. look a little bit less, uh, scrubby. Yeah. You know what? It's, uh, some of our guys had some pretty interesting facial hair there for a little while. And, uh, I, I got to the rink today and it was I mean, it looked like a bunch of babies in the locker room now without the facial hair. And so. uh, the, the girlfriends were probably tired of that <laughs> uh, and said, just shave that as soon as you possibly can. <laughs> uh, uh, the, the cool side of that, though, is with the with the Movember that the Jets did raise more money than anybody else in, in the NAHL, and it, and it wasn't even close, over $3,000 raised by your team. So we've talked before about the, the community efforts that, that your players uh, and your team is doing, uh, but that's a pretty cool thing. I mean, that's almost double the next closest team. Yeah, and that's the biggest thing is, you know, here in Janesville with the Jets, it's uh, we're, we're not your typical hockey team, and that's one thing we stress in the recruiting season to, uh, you know, families and agents and advisors. It's you know, when we bring kids here, it's, we do a lot of research on character, you know, things like that. And when we get them here, it's, it's easy for a community to, to, you know, get around a group of guys that are are good human beings and and want to be part of the community and they give back. And when you bring in those type of character and that type of character, as you can see, I mean, it's been all year, everything we've been doing, the support from the town here in Janesville has been unbelievable. And um, especially for this, it goes to such a good cause. And uh, it's nice to see the guys, uh, how serious they took it. It actually turned into to quite the competition on who was going to raise the most and Gatorades being bet and things like that. So it worked out pretty well. Alex Smith here, the, uh, the top, uh, the top, uh, second in the top for the team, but second, uh, across the league in terms of raising funds. He alone raised, uh, $520. That's pretty impressive there. And, and, uh, you'll remember Alex Smith, we talked to in, in week one and, um, you know, one of those guys that's that's kind of leading from the front for this group. When you go into this weekend, let's turn our attention to Sue here before we before we run out of time. Uh, <laughs> what sort of things do do the Eagles do that you guys are are going to have to stress uh, from your side of things? You know what? They're very offensive. They have a lot of firepower up front. So 
Uh, when it comes to the skill of their hockey team, I, I would say they're going to, they're right at the top of the league. So they're going to be able to make plays. They're going to get up and down the ice pretty well. Um, they're going to, they're going to play with a little grit. They're going to get in your face. They're going to trash talk and, and things like that. So for us, it's, uh, we know we have to stay disciplined. We're, we're not a, uh, we're not a hockey team that takes a lot of dumb penalties. Um, we're on the lower half of the league, um, in regards to, the penalty minutes on the season so for we just have to stick with our style and, and the way we play and, and stay disciplined um, are they a team that you know you talk about their firepower offensively are they really fast skaters are they really skilled skaters are they really good handling the puck what what's it that makes them so so strong on that end yeah they're stick skill they can make plays and um you know they have guys where their individual skill is is really really good so for us it's it's one thing that you know we don't point out with our team on the individual skill. It's we point out the indiv- or the success on the lines and, and whatnot. So for us, we have to make sure we're playing stick the puck on, on these guys where and, and taking the body. I mean, the one way to slow down, um, you know, skilled good skating hockey teams is, is to body up on them and, and play a physical style. So um, I think you're going to see a little bit more physicality this weekend than I think we've seen yet this year because there there is some bad blood between the two hockey teams and uh, those games are exciting. So. Uh, how about their how about their goaltenders? Uh, how about the guys that we'll see in net? Is there is there a spot that you know? All right, we're, we're he's a little more susceptible there if we if we attack from from these points from these angles. You know what? At, at this level, these kids uh, they're so different every day, especially in the net. Where I mean, one day one game you might play him Friday night and you put up fifty shots and he gives up one goal, and then the next night you might put up seventeen shots and he gives up six goals. So. I, the consistency in the net is obviously the biggest thing in our league, what you look for in a goaltender. So for us, we've seen both their goalies. One gives up a, a few more rebounds than the other one. Um, so for us, we're just going to come at him. I mean, we're going to, we're going to bump him. We're, we're going to, we're going to be in his face at all times and we're going to put pucks in the net. So is, is there, uh, you know, uh, the last change is something that's always talked about in the NHL. Is there, are, are, does that sort of thing come into play here in the NHL where you guys can see, you know, what, what they're doing and, and who they're going to have out there and be able to make a change if you want to at the end? Oh, yeah. I mean, home ice advantage when, when you're matching lines against teams, especially against a team like the Sioux, um, it, you get a little bit of an advantage there on your, at your home ice because the fact of you can match the lines. And when you're the opposing team, you have to try to sneak some by the, the home team and, and try to catch their coach when he's talking to his guys and things like that. So, for us, it's something that both my assistant and I pay a lot of attention to. I mean, he'll match our, you know, our pairings against their offensive lines, and like I match our forward lines against their defensive lines, and uh, you'll see a lot of it this weekend. All right, real quick here before we let you go, tell us about Adam Raider. Adam, you know what, Adam Raider, kid out of St. Louis, um, he, he's one of those guys for us as a rookie uh, has the potential to run a power play. He, he's ran our power play here at times. He can jump into the offense. Uh, he, he's good below the dots in the NRD zone. Um, I, I think the ceiling for Adam Raider is really, really high. He's going to be a Division One defenseman one day. Um, you know whether that's this year or next year, it, it time will tell in regards to his progression. But he's a phenomenal, phenomenal kid. Um, you know he's he's one of those guys where, you know, you'd always say, you know, I'd, I'd like that kid. He could date my daughter. You know, he's one of those types of players and, and or types of kids and and his characters off the charts. And I mean, that's. As you see, when you, you'll talk to him, you, you'll see that's uh, that's what he is, and, and that's what we look for. So the only thing against him then at this point is that he's a Blues fan. That's really all I can hold against him at this point. Then, yeah, right? you know what? And I think he's a diehard St. Louis everything fan. So, I mean, you'll have plenty of room to talk about the Rams with him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah. We can get into some political stuff there if we go. feel like it. Uh, Joe Dibble, head coach of the Janesville Jets with us here. Coach, thank you again for the time here this week, and, uh, and good luck this weekend. Thank you very much. It's uh, Joe Dibble again, head coach of the Janesville Jets. We're going to take a break here and a defenseman Adam Raider coming up next on the Janesville Jets Coaches Show here on the Big AM 1380. Back here on the Janesville Jets Coaches Show, the Big AM 1380, the Big AM 1380.com. Andrew Liebetrau with you, and we're joined now by Adam Raider, defenseman number six on the sweater, joining us here in the studio. Adam, thanks for being here. Uh, good thanks to meet you. Good to have me. you here. You bet. Um, you're a Missouri native, so let's get this out of the way immediately here. <laughs> All things St. Louis for you, right? Yeah. The Blues, the Cardinals, the Rams. All of that. Love, love St. Louis sports. All right. Well, we can get past that here, I suppose. Um, I know that Brewers and Cubs fans in the area will will probably not uh, not be big fans. Uh, you've only been able to play in 11 games this year. You had the concussion that you, you've you been dealing with, but I understand you are going to be back at it here this weekend? Yes. Excellent. So, I, I mean, take us through what this has been like your first year here with the Jets. You've only been able to play in 11 games. Um, just talk a little bit about, you know, kind of day one coming in here with the Jets and, and how things have gone here for, so far. Well, when I first got here, um, 
I kind of came in thinking, you know, like I'm, I'm the youngster. Like I gotta, I gotta show that I can be in, in this league and play with the older guys. Um, after a couple games, once I started getting it going, I thought like I knew I, I could play in this league and I felt comfortable here. So, um, coach Dibble and coach Larson, they, they've really helped me, um, proceed to, to get better in this league and be a better defenseman. But, you know, with the concussion and everything, it's, it's been a little hard, um, sitting in the stands, you know, watching your team, it's really hard, uh, not being able to play. Um, but you, you get a different view on things and you learn some different things in the stands and it helps you with your game when you come back. So I, I can imagine that. And just thinking about that aspect, especially I would imagine with, I, and I've never had a concussion in, in any sport that I've played, so I I can't say what it's like from one person to the next even, but I imagine that that's a little bit tougher because it's something where it's not a knee, it's not a shoulder, it's not something like that, where it just, you maybe feel fine, but you know you just can't get back out there yet. Yeah, it's, you know, with a, a sprained ankle or something like that, you could wrap it up, do something that you could keep continue playing, but with a concussion, you can't play. I mean, it's, um, you know, with your brain, it's everything you know, going into the future with, uh, getting a job and everything like that and going to college. So you don't want to play through that. And it's really hard because you want to continue to play, but all the headaches and everything, it'll just get worse if you continue to play. So it's really hard. Uh, what sort of things that you mentioned a different perspective, being able to watch things where you're not on the ice, you're not on the bench, you're you're able to see things, look at things differently when you're not out there. So what sort of things did you pick up about uh, about your team or maybe things that you thought as you watch it, you know, okay, that's something that I could be working on or should be doing differently. Um, when you watch different teammates, obviously everybody uh, has some better attributes of their game and stuff that they do well. Um, when you're when you're looking in the stands or watching in the stands, I should say, is you want to watch the defenseman on your team because you can learn off of the older guys or even some of the younger guys that um, do some things better than you. So, you know, just... Uh, compete level, just moving the puck, move quicker decisions, just some small things that you could do when you come back, you know, um, you know, when you are in that position, it's harder because you got to make quick decisions right away. But when you're watching in the stands, you see the whole ice and, and it's easier to, to play in the stands. Um, I should say like, yeah, I, I, I'm thinking about that as you watch sports here, w w watching from the stands, from the press box, you watch, you can see everything. Yeah. The people that are on the ice, the people that are on the field, they don't see everything that we see in the stands. So while we see things that are there, lanes, it, it, it's something that you're not seeing out there. But, um, when you're watching out there, what sort of things when, when you came in and started with the jets, um, to now, what's, what are some of the biggest things that you've been working on in, in your game progression? Uh, a lot of coaches have said that my compete level, um, is a is a little uh, slow, or I don't have that much compete level in me. Uh, that's what have caught me um, to get to the higher levels. So when I came in here, I knew that it was a, a bigger, stronger league, and I knew that Coach Largen was going to help me out with that. So I feel like I have grown a lot and being tougher and physical in this league with the older guys. Um, it's a big difference going from your own age to playing against 19, 20 year olds that have beards and, and yeah. all that stuff. So <laughs> Um, no, it, they've definitely helped me out with my compete level. That's probably the biggest thing that's changed and just kind of defensive zone in, in general. Uh, well, you, you're a defender out there. So are you, I know this is a team that uh, with Coach Dibble's style, especially this year, has progressed into a more aggressive team and, and defenders jumping into the play offensively and, and uh, you know, running, you know, running the power play, that sort of thing. So um, your game, how does that translate to this style uh, versus being a team that maybe uh, plays things a little bit more defensively? Um, well, with Coach Dibble, when I first got here, he kind of told me that he wanted to be uh, more offensive and obviously be a two-way defenseman and play well in your own end, but also get up in the play and kind of be that fourth or, or third guy if there's a four that gets caught. So um, coming in, I feel like I've I've grown a lot more being offensively because um, Coach Dibble loves when defense jump in the play because it gives you another option and maybe be that that one guy that's that's wide open when another guy doesn't find you. So I've been getting a, a lot of shots lately in, in different games, um, just jumping into play and it, and it helps out our team a lot. A lot of our defensemen have scored just jumping into the play or getting some assists, so it helps. Adam Rader, uh, defenseman number six here for the Janesville Jets. Jets again home this weekend at the Janesville Ice Arena. Uh, tickets, janesvillejets.com. You can get there. Uh, we'll get to some of the lighter questions here in just a minute, but uh, 
Uh, Coach Dibble, how does he compare? What his style? How is it different? How is it uh, similar? What sort of things have you have you really enjoyed about Coach Dibble versus some other coaches you've had? No, oh, you're putting me on the spot here. Um, Coach Dibble is very different, actually. Um, some of, some of the coaches that I've had growing up, Al McInnes, one of being a Hall of Fame defenseman, um, Keith Kachuk. I've I've had many different coaches. Um, Al McInnes was probably the one that that was the biggest that I remember. He was very like. Um, Defensemen should play defense. Um, if you're a two-way defenseman, an offensive def- defenseman, be your type of player. Um, so, like, if you're very offensive, you should mm-hmm. be offensive. Okay. They want you to jump up in the play and stuff like that. Coach Dibble expects you to be an all-around player, especially in this league. So, when you can play defense and jump in the play, it helps your team out a lot, and you'll and you'll see a lot of playing time if you can do both. Okay, excellent. Um, all right, Adam, let's get to some of the the lighter stuff here. Um, and I've asked uh, I've asked these of most of your uh, teammates that have been on here at at some point during the season so far. Uh, top movie of all time? Well, every hockey player should say Miracle okay. on Ice because okay. I mean that's just it gets you going uh, when you love the game. Watching that film, it just it's such a great movie. Ha- it, has uh, has Dibble ever had any uh, at any moments after a game where you're on the ice <laughs> and it's again, again? <laughs> no, not at this point. <laughs> <laughs> um, in practice, sometimes it's came out maybe just again on some of the when we got here for training camp. Okay, good, good. Um, the iPod, what's uh, what's playing most often on the iPod? I love country. I'm okay. a big country fan. Um, Kenny Chesney is probably my favorite country singer. So anything of Ken, Ken, Kenny Chesney, um, is big on my iPod. Okay, you you guys are a team. I've said this every every week, every show. You guys are a team of of country music fans, which is fine <laughs> with me. I'm 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 on the same page there. Um, Thanksgiving or Christmas? Christmas. Christmas. Okay, excellent. Um, pregame meal. You've got your choice of uh, of whatever you've got, whatever you want before your before a game. What's your pregame meal? I am a big fan of butter noodles. Um, just making some some noodles and then just putting some butter in it and that's a good pregame meal for me. Keep it simple. All right, post game then. So post game you've already you've already had the say post game on on Saturday where you're done for the weekend then. What uh, what's your go to? I mean, I could always go for pasta, but um after a big weekend series, you know, you try and go for something a little healthy, but you know, after uh a big series, you might want to go for like a big cheeseburger or something greasy that you couldn't have had during the week or during that game series that Excellent. might have put you back. Very good, very good. Um, all right, so Raider, yours is uh, yours is a little tougher because I feel like Raider is is kind of a, a built in nickname already in <laughs> hockey because you've already got the ER going on. So what yeah. what is the nickname then? Um, a lot of people call me Raider. Um, they just go straight up Raider. Yeah, okay. probably my biggest nickname would probably be Raids. Okay, all um, right, yeah. All right. Pretty easy. Yeah, pretty simple, straightforward. Yeah, you've got one of those where it just it, it works on its own. Because in hockey, I've learned it's 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 either the the er, the s, maybe the <laughs> maybe the y at the end, and a coach dibs, and yeah. so it's different for everybody here. It's not Grandpa Jenks. I know we embarrassed him a long time ago <laughs> uh, by by donning him with that one. Um, so you've got uh, you've got Sue in town this weekend. Your first first weekend back on the ice in a few weeks here. So what is your main goal? Um, obviously your, your goal as a team is to win, but individually, what are you hoping to, to get done this weekend? Well, I just want to get back in the lineup, you know, after, uh, being out of the lineup for a month now, you know, you, when you're playing the game that you love and you can't do it because of an injury or something like that, you just hate sitting in the stands because you want to get back on the ice. Really? I'm just hoping to, to play a good game, get my legs back under me and just get back into the game mode. Uh, you know, just not playing a month. You, it kind of loses it a little bit, you know, practices and obviously a game. So Getting back into it will be uh, a big thing for me. All right, Adam. Well, thank you so much for being here today. Really appreciate the time, and uh, and good luck here this weekend the rest of the season. Thank you very much. Absolutely. It's Adam Raider, defenseman, number six on the sweater here for the Janesville Jets, and uh, he will be back at it along with the Jets this weekend at the Janesville Ice Arena. Tickets online for you right now, janesvillejets.com. A lot going on at the arena this weekend. We'll have a show here uh, next week and the week after as well. The Jets in town all this month, so uh, take advantage while the Jets are here at home at the Ice Arena. This has been the Janesville Jets Coaches Show. Thanks for listening. We'll talk to you next week.